everybody, and welcome to this episode of Infantry Outdoors. Yours truly, your favorite disabled DJ. I'm DJ Infantry, back at it again, welcoming you to the program and hope that wherever you are around the world, you're having an awesome and an amazing day. Before we get started, let's acknowledge our sponsors. These are the folks that keep us going here on the program. Silver Connections Group. Make sure that you guys get your web pages, your social rankings boosted by using Silver Connections Group. Check them out today at silverconnectionsmobile.com. As well as water purification products. Pure water at your fingertips. Hey, if you need that pure water solution, let my friends over there take care of it for you. Check them out today at waterpurificationproducts.com. Use promo code INFANTRY with both of these companies and you'll unlock additional savings when you order. Well, big shout out and a big thank you to our sponsors. And don't forget, if you want to become a sponsor of the program or help us out, there's two ways that you can do it. Write to us at infantryoutdoors at yahoo.com. If your product fits our target demographic, well, then we're happy to work with your company. The other way is to donate via PayPal. Send a donation today. Go to paypal.me forward slash infantryoutdoors. All of your donations will be acknowledged as well as our sponsors in each one of our upcoming programs. But for all other information, check us out today at our website at infantryoutdoors.com and across all social media as Infantry Outdoors. So with that said, guys, let's get into today's program. I've always been fascinated with collecting soda cans as a little kid. You know, you go and you collect them and you collect them and you get this big pile and you take them to the metal guy and you get a few dollars and you can go out, you can go with your friends, go to the carnival, buy some clothes, whatever it might be. Well, as an adult, I still collect soda cans, but I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to melt them down and turn them into bars, coins, ingots, things like that, that are actually worth more at your local recycling place than your typical soda can. So in this series, we're going to be talking about how to melt down aluminum cans and how to turn them into bars, coins, and ingots that you can put to the side, take to that recycle guy, and get a lot more money for your dollar. But in order to do that, we have to start off with what things we need to actually melt metal. Obviously, we're going to have to start off, we need a foundry, which we have. And we have some other tools, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the program. But one of the most important tools that you have to have is your crucible. Now, starting this off, I've only done one or two melts before this because I wanted to get a little bit of information on how this is done before I present it to you guys. But keep in mind, I am far from experienced, okay? This is just stuff that I've picked up over the last month on how to get started doing this. So if you see something that's wrong or you wanna give me some comments, drop them down below or write to us. So with that said, let's dive into the crucible. So what I have here are two of the same size number three crucibles. Now, when I bought this foundry, it advertised a six kilogram crucible being able to work and fit in this foundry. This is what it came with. This is not a number six crucible. This is a number three. This is a three kilogram crucible. A number six crucible will not fit in this foundry. So the folks that advertise it, advertise it wrong right off the bat. Well, this is my crucible after only a few uses. And I literally, I mean only like two days of melting aluminum cans and it's pretty beat up, it's cracked. It really didn't hold up very well. This, on the other hand, is a brand new graphite crucible that I'm hoping will hold up longer. Now, I've done some homework on YouTube and realized that I should have tempered and seasoned, which is what we're gonna do in this program, and see if the crucible lasts any longer than this one did. So, today's objective is to temper and cure the new crucible, so then in the next episode, we're able to start melting our aluminum. So let's dive right in and find out what we have to do. It's really very simple from what I've seen on the internet. Okay, as you guys can see from only a, literally two days of melting, this is what's left of the crucible. Now I'm sure it could be used. I don't know if it can't be. I mean, it, I don't know if I would want to use it again. It does now have a crack there. You can see cracking on the sides. Um, I'm just afraid that if you put this in a furnace, and it breaks, you're gonna have molten metal everywhere. So, ordered the new crucible, and today we're going to temper, and hopefully it doesn't come out looking like this after only two uses. Okay, as you guys can see, we've got our crucible here in front of us, and from what I've seen on YouTube is we're just simply gonna add a third of the way full of this crucible with borax. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in the furnace, we're gonna allow it to melt to a liquid form, and then we're gonna basically just coat the crucible with the borax, dump it out, allow it to cool, and that should temperature seal our crucible. So, okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put it in our foundry. So 
close it up. Now we're gonna light this up, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna slowly heat from no temp at all, all the way up to the borax melts, and we get that crucible glowing red hot. And then we wanna coat it the inside with that borax. So let's get this lighted, let's get things started. All right, here we go, everybody's favorite part. So she's lit, like I said, we're gonna close it up. And we're gonna slowly start heating this, gradually letting it get hotter and hotter and hotter until we eventually reach that point where the borax itself will melt and turn into a liquid form. And uh, yeah, we'll be able to coat the inside. So stay tuned, give the video a thumbs up. If you guys have any comments or anything, drop them down below. If you know of anything I'm doing different, anything I'm doing wrong, let me know. This is you know, only my second, third time really doing this. But it's a great hobby, great way to melt some metal. You can use it for future products. Uh, you can use it for future projects. Or you can do what I'm gonna do and just you know, make it a little bit more money at the recycle shop. So give us a thumbs up on the video and drop comments below. In the meantime, let's heat this. All right guys, while that's heating up, let's take a moment to talk about some of the tools and things that you're going to need if you're going to attempt doing this at home. The first thing, very first thing I'm gonna re recommend you get is a good pair of long gloves. Welder's gloves, barbecue gloves, something that resists high heat and something that goes way up your arm. As you guys can see when we put these on, that it goes up my arm. The reason for this is if any oil, anything splatters, you don't want molten metal getting on your skin at all. Plus, working around this furnace is excessively, extremely high heat, so once you start cranking it, so to be able to grab it and do things, these are very, very important. Now, I will tell you that it does get hot enough to go through the gloves, so make sure that you do get a good pair of gloves. So this is number one, get yourself a good pair of gloves. Okay, moving on to number two, the next thing you're gonna need is a good pair of forged pliers. Now this is a pair that came with my kit. As you can see, nothing more than a flat pair of pliers. Now what I use these for is to take my crucible in and out of my foundry. Simply put it down like this, grab the crucible, lift it out, set it on the floor, and reverse the process to put it back in. I also use these sometimes to open and close the lid, you know, something to give me a little reach. Um, but these do get hot, they do heat up, I will tell you that. It's all, everything's metal, so metal heats up. This is all where your gloves come in. So get yourself a good pair of foundry pliers like this. Now, the last thing that I think you're gonna need that I've found that I've needed is a good pair of crucible tongs. Now, there's a wide variety of brands on the market, but the one that I've found that I feel the safest using and the most comfortable using is this pair right here. What these do is they grab onto your crucible and you're able to grab it and then comfortably pour, pick up, move around, whatever you wanna do with your crucible. Uh, this is just a better way of grabbing the crucible. So crucible tongs, pair of pliers, and a really good pair of gloves is really all that you need to get yourself started in this. Um, just remember safety is paramount because you're working with molten metals that can not only hurt you, they can start fires, they can, you know, concrete explodes. Just be very careful in what you're doing. So crucible tongs, pair of pliers, and a good pair of gloves, you should be all set. So yeah, let's move on and we'll crank this up a little bit more. Let this heat sink, keep on going, stay tuned. So as you guys can see, we're slowly heating it and letting it sit at that temperature, so gradually getting it up to heat. When we look inside, we're looking good. The borax still hasn't completely melted. So I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn it up a little bit more, let it sit at the next heat level, and go from there. It is a temper, you know, you're tempering something, so you wanna take your time doing it. You don't wanna rush it. You don't wanna just crank it full blast. You wanna gradually bring it up to where it's glowing orange with that melted in it, and we'll slosh it around and coat the insides, let it cool. So let's turn it up a little bit more. All right, let's take a look inside. And see what she's looking like. Bring you guys along with me.
Yeah. So what we're doing, guys, is again, we are slowly bringing up the heat of this furnace. We want to get this crucible glowing red hot, which it partially of the way is, as you guys can see inside of there. Um, once it gets really hot, once we get all as hot as we want it to, we'll shut it off. The borax should be melted. We'll slosh the borax around to coat the insides of, the, of it, put it back in, dump out the excess, put it back in and let it cool. So that's the plan of it. So right now, it's just heating, 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 heating. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna check it. Come over. Turn down real low. Get our safety gear on. Guys, this is a really dangerous part because I'm messing with liquid chemical melted. It's super hot. And I'm just trying to coat the whole inside of this crucible. see that or how well you can see that coated it the best I can we're gonna put her back in we're back guys it's the next day I let the crucible completely cool down inside of the furnace now I wanted to show you this is the one I originally got with my foundry and this has only been through honestly guys like two days of melting and it's cracked it's chipped things got stuck inside of it it's just it I don't know I wouldn't trust it to melt again because I would hate to leak molten metal into my foundry and then that's the end of that so this is our new crucible after we have fired it we have tempered it we have put our borax through it it looks really good now 
that's how you temper the crucible to my knowledge i've done my homework on youtube i did what i was shown uh, so the next thing is going to be in this series is for us to melt some metal so hope that you guys enjoyed this lesson on how to prepare your crucible for metal melting and hope that you give us a thumbs up if you're not subscribed well, please subscribe we'd love to have you around and be sure to drop comments on the video hey we're learning just as you are remember that if you have any comments questions or concerns always feel free to write to us at infantryoutdoors at yahoo.com and visit our website at infantryoutdoors.com that's going to do it for me the infantry i hope you guys have an amazing day and i hope that this and all of my adventures inspires you to get outdoors well, until we meet again have an amazing day everybody